Welcome to the Golden Hour Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Mays. We're here in the Polar Pro Studio. In this installment, we speak with Chris Poplowski, who's a businessman turned photographer who's amassed over 100,000 followers on Instagram. Since the recording of this podcast, Chris's Instagram handle went from Chris Poops to now Chris Roams. Of course, I find his original Instagram handle very interesting. We started our conversation off talking about the origin of the name Chris Poops. So we're here with Chris Poops. Uh, can you explain your Instagram name for me? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, <laughs> I guess in high school, we all had kind of clever ways of coming up with silly names for each other. And it's just a bunch of kids being kids. Yeah. And uh, my last name being Poplowski, it you know, started with Pops. Everyone called me Pops. And then all of a sudden, people started like cleverly calling me Poops. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? That's kind of funny because my grandpa, you know, we call my, my grandma Noni and my grandpa Poopa. And uh, when oh, I was nice. when I was going through IG, I was like, "All right, Chris Pops." You know, that's obviously like my first choice, and then wasn't available. And I was like, "All right, Chris Poops," and it was available. And I was like, "All right, let's just stick with that then, whatever." I and, love uh, that you're building an entire like following and career <laughs> around Chris Poops. Yeah, you know, it's it started as a joke and a personal account where I was posting you know a lot of personal photos and just kind of living life and yeah and just having jobs and just doing that. And then all of a sudden started taking photos and was like, wow, like people don't forget this. And yeah, it's very memorable. Yeah. And Do like, people think it's your real last name though, ever? Uh, Mr. Poops. Yes and no. I, I, f <laughs> I feel like I try to avoid that conversation yeah. and it's more of a, just kind of laugh about it. And I just tell people like, Hey, you won't forget it. And yeah, you just kind of roll with that. So we have a, uh, a little, game that we play with all of our guests it's called uh one word rapid fire i'm just gonna ask you a couple of questions and it should be easy for you to just like quickly answer with just one word it's like it'll be this or this this or this which one do you prefer Sweet. i'm a talker so it's easy to make it easy on me perfect <laughs> so um i'm just gonna read through the list here so we got a 30 second timer we're gonna just try to get through as many of these as we can uh we've got rockwell in the back here with a timer are you ready Yes, sir. Cool. So we got a 30 second timer. We're going to just try to get through as many of these as we can. All right. You ready? You're ready. Cool. Countdown from five, four, three, two, go. Canon, Sony, or Nikon? Sony. iOS or Android? iOS. Mac or PC? Mac. One man band or working as a team? Uh, used to be one man band. Now it's working as a team. Nice. Do you prefer production or post production? Production. Spaghetti with meat sauce or Alfredo? Alfredo. Boom. You got it. <laughs> we ran through them really quick. <laughs> nice. That was a 21 second. Dude, wow. that was like, that's record time, man. Wow. That's record time. <laughs> Can you elaborate a little bit on the one-man band? Yeah. Um, I think it all starts with a dream, and I feel like that's a common thing on IG right now is a lot of people want to be traveling, a lot of people want to be taking photos, a lot of people even outside of Instagram want to just be doing what they love to do yeah. and finding a passion. And, uh, when I was in this sole pursuit of life and trying to figure out what, you know, I wanted to do with my time, mm -hmm. graduated college, got a business degree, started working at a business, like a business job, um, in a marketing department, selling marketing services. And, uh, I was never doing anything creative ever. And, I struggled with that a lot, just sitting in an office. And um, I started seeing photos on Instagram, just like we all kind of follow fun accounts that we just appreciate their yeah. content. Um, and I just made this decision one day. I, I literally got home, sat down with all my buddies who I, like every day, this is what we did. We just get off work and come hang out. I was like, guys, I'm tired of this. Like, I don't want to be working for the man anymore. I want to kind of be doing my own thing. And sure enough, um, I just, went for it. I literally quit everything. Um, what year was this? Uh, about three years ago. So 2016. Yeah, just about. Um, and what's, what's funny about that is I, I you know, I'd love to get into that more and, and yeah. how that kind of all came together. Cause it wasn't, it wasn't just like quitting. It wasn't just like letting up. I actually saved money and I had a plan and, um, I was very, I guess, smart with it. Yeah. Um, and I had all my, all the equipment already purchased everything that I, you know, wanted to do, but it originally it started with camping trips and just kind of going camping with buddies and just like capturing moments and, and being out there in Yosemite or yeah. Big Sur or wherever with buddies. Um, and then sure enough, 
it just, I was just like, you know what? Like, I think I could do this. I think I could just take photos for, for clients, for brands, for weddings, for, I mean, at that moment, I was just like, what can I get my hands on to kind of stay afloat right now? And it started with like rims and like tire companies. It started with, um, I shot a little pay. Yeah. Just anyone that'll pay me. And I wasn't exactly passionate about it, but I was passionate about getting out of an office. Yeah. And, um, you know, I feel like when you're in that almost survival mode of a career, you got to do what you can to survive. And for a while it was just me. And, um, you know, I still kind of held on really tight with my roots where friends would come out, um, even family, eventually a girlfriend, you know, and people would just kind of join the ride. And it just was me taking photos. It was me asking for help and support from, you know, people around me just like every day. Mm -hmm. Um, and still, even to this day, if I'm going on a trip and I got a job to get done, I kind of lean on those people and it's in my head, uh, just a, a constant pursuit of getting, uh, work with what I'm passionate about done. And it never feels like work, even though yeah. you kind of refer to it as work. Yeah. Um, it's just a constant pursuit of what's inside, I guess, passion and, and creativity. Chris already seemed different than most creatives. The way that he was saving his money, planning his life out, having goals in place are all things that I think we can learn from. What he had to say next about college and quitting his job are things that I found really interesting. You graduated college. What, what school did you go to? USC. USC. What was your degree in? Uh, business administration with an emphasis in marketing. Super technical and amazing. Right. So you just jumped right into corporate world, mm-hmm. I assume. What, what were you doing with that? Um, it was for a, a company called ITC. I think they kind of rebranded since. Um, not to throw them under the bus by any means because they, yeah. you know, they did work just like anyone else. Um, but I just wasn't going after my passion. Sure, passion. It, yeah, it wasn't, well, it wasn't, it wasn't photos. It, it wasn't something that I had found. It was yeah. more of something I could do. And, um, pay when your I, bills, right? Yeah. Pay my bills. And I love that. Like I, I love that grind and I feel like it's so important to know what it's like to go through those moments because everything's applicable in life, whether it's an art, yeah. um, a communicative skill, whether it's, it's just, everything's a learning experience to me. Um, and what, what I kind of learned from all that is that, um, you, you got, you got to put in that time. You got to put in that time. If you're stuck in a job and you want to get out, it's, it's, times of the essence where you got to make the commitment eventually but if you don't have the camera you want or the gear you want or um, you don't feel like it's the right time of life to do it start thinking about that set a goal for yourself and for me I'm a little bit more of a planner than just kind of like just dropping everything and going Um, so I made a commitment to myself that you know I want to have you know Sony a7r mark ii and I saved up for it I saved up for actually, you know what? Take that back. I saved up for an A7R. The two wasn't out yet. Yeah. Um, saved up for it. Got all the equipment I wanted. I don't even think I had all the lens that I lenses that I wanted. But sure. I kind of had They're super like super expensive. A, <laughs> yeah. I kind of had like just the base of what I was hoping for. Wow. Um, and it got to a point where it's like this passion, this creativity that I was trying to pursue like money was kind of what I focused on to begin with. Yeah. But it was never about that. It was just about finding the time and the commitment to being outside. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I, I I tell all my friends who are trying to take the same leap right now that are in a job and they're like, dude, I just want to leave. I constantly tell them like, we'll start thinking about it. You know, you you don't have to leave tomorrow. You don't have to leave next week. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think they should just quit now. Right. Yeah. or, Or some people have a hard time finding that time to quit because they just, it's, it's comfortable. It's a routine. Like there's so many, so many things that come into this that if you know, you want to do it, just try to be as logical as you can about it. And if you feel like getting out and just doing it tomorrow is what you need to do, do it. And if you feel like it's saving up and getting the equipment you need and and finding a job opportunity in the creative freelance world before you leave, do it. Yeah. But the point is you got to do it. You got to commit to it. You got to get heavily invested in that process. And I think that really applies to life. I don't think that's just like your freelance photographer life. I think that's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to shoot videos? Commit. You want to cook for a living? Commit. You want to, mm-hmm. you know, be a barista and, and open your own coffee shop. You got to commit to that. Mm-hmm. It doesn't just happen. Your photography is just phenomenal. How much of this was learned? How much of it was just kind of natural for you? Because, I mean, 
you can totally say that I'm going to quit my job and buy a camera and whatever, but like you don't just automatically become a good photographer. Like, how did you cut your teeth to get to this point to where your feet just looks so good? Cut your teeth is a metaphoric saying from when a baby gets its teeth for the very first time. The gums get cut by the baby's teeth. That's where that saying comes from, if you've ever wondered. In this context, I was asking Chris, how did you cut your teeth to get to the point where your Instagram looks so pretty? Um, well, thank you to start. <laughs> <laughs> Humbled. Um, Hashtag humble. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I, I feel like it's a bit unorthodox, but I feel like anybody can kind of say that with photography because a lot of it's just getting out there. Um, I didn't study photography in school. I, ha I had no idea how to use a camera when I picked it up. I, I don't even know. Like, I think a lot of my first pictures I ever took were with an iPhone and it's bad. Like it's, <laughs> it, I look back and it's like, that was fun, but I would never share something like that. Yeah. Um, and I kind of just taught myself, like some of it was YouTube. I, I'd say very little of it was YouTube. Um, some of it was, was sources like Skillshare and a lot of those companies that kind of just put out articles on learning. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I look at that, it was more of like a technical learning. It was more of like, what is ISO? What is F stop? You know, yeah. like what, what is the technical side of photography? So you literally were that based, like you entry you, level to the max. So like, you really must have been drawn to photography mm -hmm. for some reason. Like what was it? Was there a particular, particular, photographer that you followed that was like inspired you to even begin at that most basic level i think it was just traveling um i'm sure there were artists along the way there's always artists that inspire and keep me kind of motivated especially now more than ever but traveling like it, it, i think i got a taste of europe for a month after graduation it was like a grandma's gift to me mm -hmm. um and i just got out there and i got to experience new culture new coffee new food like those things still to this day blow my mind, all the different foods and coffees around the world. Um, but just the taste of something different, the uncomfortable area of life that I've never explored. You know, I've always been in an office or at school or this and that. Um, that kind of just pulled me to take photos. I think it was a GoPro, my first camera ever. Really? Um, and Wow. Yeah. And, and you know, I like I wanted you to... just wanted to capture that moment. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and then, you know, what ended up happening was it wasn't even the technical side that I, I needed to learn. I started realizing that, like, if I commit time, 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 if I can get out there and get just get a sunrise, get a sunset, like, those are my two favorite times of day, um, kind of, I, f I feel like a lot of photographers can agree with that. Yeah. Um, just seeing a sunrise, I was just like, I got to find a way to capture this beautifully. And it, I wasn't always good at it. I wasn't always like you know coming up with phenomenal photos but now i just get so many places all the time for work and for pleasure that it's just it's kind of constantly putting me in a moment a moment that i really appreciate and just want to be there for and even when it's raining my my girlfriend always gets mad because she's like oh we don't need to wake up it's raining like we could sleep in today it's like sleep in i'm gonna sneak out the door you know i'm gonna i'm gonna go enjoy this because I, I just like to see, like, I just like to visualize what's happening. Wow. Chris didn't really answer the question in the way I was expecting. I thought he'd be drawn to photography through the beautiful portraiture that you could take of models and getting beautiful bokeh and different colors with post-production, just all the things that come with professional photography. But what he was more interested in was just sharing the world with others and the way that he chose to do that was through photography. I find that really fascinating and it gave me a whole new perspective on what photography can actually mean. Basically, the way that you're making money is, for example, movement. Mm -hmm. They hired you to go to Canada, take some pictures of watches, mm -hmm. you post it on their feed, but then also on your own feed for your own personal growth. Or yeah, so Are they hiring you for your following? Or are they also hiring you just to take pictures for the website? It, it's really just connecting with companies who want to build out a lifestyle. You know, for me, I wanted to travel and movement wants, wanted to see the world. Um, and, you know, even, even creating a general company here, like not just movement, but every company just wants to get their product cool places. They want to, they want to reach the world. If you, if you must, they want to connect with everybody out there who might find some useful way of using their product. Um, I've definitely used Instagram as a tool to be able to connect with those brands um, by using what I want to achieve in life, which is really just see the world. You know, like 
I think in the last year and a half, Megan and I have been super lucky to see 20, 25 countries. Um, I can't even, I haven't even tried to count them recently. Um, but I'm essentially just taking photos for them. Um, I, I love Instagram to death. I love everything about it. I think it, I think it connects everybody and it's a very, very good tool for this generation because everyone's connected to this grid. Um, but I'm even now trying to get away from the, the influencer route, um, Mm -hmm. because I, I see a growth happening in a learning experience where, you know, I started promoting places like where, where we want to go, where we want to experience, where we want to travel. And then it turns into everybody that's else's that's doing that gets all these people to get into these, you know, new locations. Um, and it's, it's it's not necessarily ready for that. Like I, I want everyone to see the world, but we also need to be educated in the sense of how to go view these. Like don't leave your trash, you know. Like don't don't fly a drone where you can't fly your drone just because you're creative and you want to do that. You have to learn how to how to be responsible and respectable of those things. So when it comes wow. to to working with companies, you just have to be, I guess, willing to put your creativity on the line and. I always try to form my my uh, partnerships around creating content for them because I want them to grow their images and kind of connect with their audience in that unique way. And I'm all for being a part of that and putting my face or my image or my travels behind that. But when it comes to me, as you might see on my feed, is I don't really post watch photos anymore. I don't really post the products and the companies I'm working with. I believe in them. I, I love them. I, I, I'm a full-hearted supporter of what they're trying to do and their missions. But I don't post it because lately it's been more about um, helping, I guess, nature be respected. And, and kind of everyone's like, okay, there's this beautiful place in Utah. And how do you get there? It's difficult. It's a It's a it's a tough journey. It's a tough hike. It's a tough drive. It's off-roading. It's this and that, like more of educating people on what it's like to adventure and how to get out there and and appreciate everything. So in a way they are funding all this for you. If you look at your feed as in a vacuum, it's like this guy just spends all this money, goes all over the world and takes (laughs) pictures. I get asked that a lot. How do I afford it? Yeah. (laughs) But so there's, you know, hundreds of photos of products mm-hmm. in these locations, they have it. It's on their website, it's on their channel, it's on their whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you take two or three for yourself. Yep. And you post them. Yeah, and I and I like that balance because I love it. Yeah, I, I I love that in and of itself because it creates balance in my life. Yeah. You know, like it's it's like how, some of you, some of them. Yeah, and it, it kind of puts the content exclusively in their hands to use and connect with their audience, and it allows me to connect with my audience. Yeah. And now I still take on influencer projects. I still influence to some degree because I, I just choose to do that as an individual sometimes. Yeah. Um, but it's not always about that for me. Like for me, it's traveling. I want companies to travel, so, so to speak, you know, and sometimes I get comments back from clients where it's like, wow, like I can't believe some of the things you did this trip. Like it was so fun. And it's like, thank you. Like you, yeah. you made that possible. I started with not a lot. You know, I, I didn't start with some like huge foundation financially that just allowed me to travel. I started off with the commitment to getting brands places they wanted to be. And I didn't care about profiting. I, th- I think we all get kind of lost in that sometimes. Like, yeah. How do I afford this, 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 and this? And live there's cheaply. so, there's so, well, there's so many ways to live cheaply on the road. Like you can, you can sleep in your car. I have probably slept in the back of my Jeep more times than I've slept in a hotel in the last year. And yeah. it's not always comfortable. I'm freezing. Like f- funny story. So you don't want to leave your car on, I guess. <laughs> but, Funny story. A, a week and a half ago, I was in, uh, uh, where were I? New Mexico with, uh, Phil, Zeke and my buddy Ryan. And we're, we, we had been sleeping in hotels, but where, where we were at that moment in time to shoot this location for sunrise the next morning, there was no hotels, especially cheap ones close by. And we were just like, do you guys want to sleep in the car tonight? And we all slept in a 90 degree position, sitting up in all four seats in the car. And it it was miserable. It was, you woke up with pains, but you know, it's gone now. And we were all just laughing about it. Like now till this day, it's just hilarious because like, it's like being a little kid, you know, like you just kind of get out there and have fun and enjoy that time with your friends and, Mm -hmm. and, and whoever you're with. Um, I think culture just for some reason, maybe it's just American. It probably is. It's like you, you think things need to be done a certain way. I need a rental car. I need a hotel. 
I need all my food to be paid for and I need to have at least, you know, $350 a day for food. Mm -hmm. And like the truth is you really don't need that. But I think on the high end of things, like those, those photographers that cost a ton of money that yeah. like they're going to demand that cause they can't, right? Well, like, it's achievable. That's, yeah. that's the thing is like, I, I never will feel like I'm at the end road. I feel like I'm always going to be working towards something. Yeah. And luckily till this day is like, I mean, I, I do have the luxury of some of those things because yeah. of how hard I've worked to get there. Yeah. But if you're willing to, to not start with that, I mean, I was, I was 24, 25 when I started off you know, making money doing this and it wasn't always easy. It was, it wasn't always like the, like till this day, I'm still sleeping in cars, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't need to, I don't, I don't necessarily have to do that, but it's kind of like my way of sticking with my roots a little bit and, yeah. kind, and kind of continuously working towards, um, a passion. I'm a tech nerd. Like I love gear. Yeah. You mentioned Sony. Are you a Sony guy? I am. Yeah. So what are you shooting on today? Like right now, Sony a seven R two, um, Everyone always asks my favorite lens. I can't ever decide because I feel like every project has a unique need. Um, but because I shoot landscapes and, and a lot of like small people, like tiny, tiny people, big landscape feel. Yeah. Um, 16 to 35 uh, G Master has just been this. It's a beast. That lens. lens is a beast, dude. Yeah. The yeah the two eight aperture is great. It's actually really light. It looks when you look at pictures, it looks big and heavy, but yeah. it's actually not that heavy. Yeah. It's it's a unique camera setup and. Um, it took me a while to understand this because my girlfriend shoots Canon and I, I love Canon. Like Canon makes incredible, incredible stuff. Especially um, on skin tones. Yeah, especially. And she's a wedding photographer and I shoot all those with her. So we always talk about like Sony versus Canon after a wedding. Another another story, I guess. But, um, <laughs> you know, like I was talking to Phil the other day about like why Sony and even, I mean, there's so many good cameras out there. Like there's, like, yeah. you, you joke, Nikon dads, like, oh, you know, I would never shoot Nikon, this and that. It doesn't matter. You like the Z6, right? Yeah, you know, like the Nikon. they're all great cameras, like Fuji, Nikon, Canon, Sony. Everyone's coming out with these incredible pieces of technology. But for me, Sony, the way, the, the reason why it does it for me is because they're super connected with their, their community. Um, I didn't even realize that until recently when I went to their B alpha event in Los Angeles, they kind of been hosting these in all the major cities around the world. Mm -hmm. Um, but the production value that went into a community event, like there's no money to be made for Sony. It's just like, Hey, if you're in LA and you have a camera or you're interested in photography oh, or there's anything money to be made because of what you're doing right now. Exactly. I guess so. Right. <laughs> I guess so. I guess that all comes around full circle, but, um, yeah, it was just unique to me, you know, like yeah, it, it, I've always speaking to the creators. I've yeah. always been connected with them like that. Mm -hmm. And I've always appreciated their tech, just like anyone would with any camera yeah. body they're working with, but they're just the community aspect. And that's awesome. Yeah. And, and they and their sensors are good too. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure they're making the sensors for like Canon and, and everyone mm -hmm. else now too. So it's, everybody has their own, uh, interpretation of color science. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that's where things differ and that's where arguments ensue especially <laughs> the canon versus sony argument yeah. it's like it's never ending um our channel i have a channel called kinetika and we review camera gear yeah rocky was telling me <laughs> oh yeah and uh like sony and fuji people are the worst in the comments like, <laughs> they literally like they're so diehard like fanboys uh -huh. that, uh, and girls that like they just troll the comments yeah. so like if i say something bad about sony i hear about it um, but even Canon too, but yeah. I won't get into it. But Honestly, like it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I try to not get so opinionated with, with art anymore because I feel like there's so much room for that in the world already. Like everyone feels that way where I, I look more at like, wow, like colorful or not, you were able to experience that, you know, like mm -hmm. that, that picture I'm looking at, like yeah. I try to put myself in the shoes of that person, regardless of their interpretation yeah. of it. And I'm like, that is a beautiful moment. Like that yeah. is something I would want to be standing there for. And I think that's the whole concept of art too. It's not, you're supposed to get opinionated. I feel like that's been programmed in us since, since painters of early days or anything really. But sure. when I look at it, it's just, I, I try to be more in that moment. And I think that's why I do what I do is I want people to know what it's like to be standing wherever I'm standing while they're sitting behind a desk or while they're doing this. So they can kind of dream, they can kind of pick up, the pieces of what they might not have right now or where they want to be this weekend and then kind of feel inspired to get there. And I think that's, that's kind of my goal. At least I try to stay away from the whole debate, I guess from yeah. Canon Sony and more of like, 
I would want to be there. I love it, dude. It's drama, and it lights up the comments. <laughs> like, dude. Um, dude, I love the way that you just said all that, like being in the moment of an image or even in terms of video, the same thing, like imagining yourself in that circumstance and appreciating that. I mean, that's really what I think any photographer would want. So mm-hmm. you, would, you would want anybody to think about their images that way rather than just all the, the skin tones off a little bit. Yeah. It's, so. it's hard when you start working too because when you're taking photos for companies and you're trying to get your personal photos too sometimes i have to remind myself like it's almost like clap my hands before i know it the sunrise is over and i forgot all about it mm-hmm. and that's happened that's happened a lot where i forget to be standing where i'm actually standing um what do you mean like like you're working yeah like i'm appreciating in a, it? i'm in a different like state or flow i guess some people refer to it i'm just i'm kind of like grinding nonetheless at a yeah. ch- like get you know getting a project done and then all of a sudden like i have to look back at the material on a on a hd screen and be like oh that sunrise is beautiful but like you don't remember I, it. I didn't put my camera down to look at it and yeah i'm better at it now it's like one of those learning experiences you kind of have to yeah. learn to take at least 5 to 10 15 20 seconds you know even if it's a minute whatever you get out of that morning try to stop and enjoy it because that's what's kept me going like if i if i forgot what that feeling was like i'd probably be turning this more into an eight to five feeling than yeah. than maintaining a passion towards it and i think i'm trying not to get lost in the whole content like get you know always need to get content 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 yeah it's like i'm out here to enjoy this too that's what i started for that's what i wanted in life like i wanted to travel and experience not not just sit behind these fancy tech screens all the time did you just hear that Chris doesn't care about what tool is being used. It's all about what's actually going on in that moment for him. Sure, if you save up your money and buy expensive equipment, those things can help you as a professional. Next time you look at an image, try to feel what the photographer is experiencing. We got some images that we pulled from your Instagram account. Um, And I just want to get a little backstory on on each one of these pictures. Yeah, I'm interested to see what you guys what you guys chose. How far <laughs> you dug? I have no idea. Number one. Ah. <laughs> who is this beautiful woman? It's my grandma. I assume. Nani. Tell me about her. Oh man, she is everything to me. Like I, I feel like now more than ever. Let me let me even like start with a story. I guess Megan, who's like my friend, like at that time in life, and now my girlfriend of of, so of a year and a half. 2016. Yeah. So like. I used to sit that this lady has raised me since day one. I've actually lived with her my entire life. Yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not married yet. So I don't feel the intention of like even needing my space for an apartment because I'm traveling when I'm home. I want to spend time with this, this lady and my mom really. Um, but she just imparts so much wisdom on me and inspires me yeah. because she doesn't slow down. And that's exactly who I am. Like my friends know me as like borderline crazy because the things I wake up for and the amount of sleep I get sometimes all inspired by this lady right here. Um, She's got a gorgeous smile and she looks like just a wonderful person. Yeah, she is. And and she she told me one day, she's like, one day a girl's going to come along. She's going to flip your world upside down. And all this traveling that you're doing, you may or may not be able to do it anymore. And then I was like, Grandma, I don't know. I mean, like, I want to travel. We'll see, where, we'll see what happens, you know? And then Megan comes along and it's like, we're still traveling and we're still doing we're all together. this. We're together. But she flipped my world upside down because it like everything kind of clicked at that moment. And you know, it's kind of like one of those things where she imparts all this wisdom and you might not understand it in that moment, but then years down the road, you're like, what? Like mind blown, you know? Um, how much, let me ask you this though. How much more enjoyable is traveling now that you have a girlfriend? Yeah. Um, a lot. It, 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 it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah I it's, you so. just, I would imagine. you know, you can get lonely out there. It's you, really lonely. Yeah, you, Believe it or not, when you travel, like I traveled a lot in the freelance lifestyle, mm-hmm. it's just, you're going to hotels by yourself, yeah. you're driving in a rental car by yourself. I mean, it's, and that's why I've always tried to travel with friends at least, yeah. like kind of having that like piece of home with you at all times. Um, how do you pull that off? <laughs> just communicate really just always ask. And I, you, got, I, you I, get the company to pay for them too. Um, not always. I mean, sometimes it's just, it's again, balancing, like, you know, when you're going somewhere, I don't want to be in work mode 24 seven. I want to have like time with those friends or, or time, like even Megan, dude, we have to remind each other all the time. And thanks to this woman right here, um, you have to slow down. You, you, if you're not healthy, if you're not eating right, if you're not sleeping right, if you're not, 
um, focused in the right ways, you can get lost in all that you're doing yeah. and you can get sick. And that's happened to me. You know, like I've gotten sick on the road yeah. and you learn how to control those things. Luckily it wasn't <laughs> like life endangering or anything. Dude, you're, um, you're speaking directly to me right now. <laughs> yeah. I got sick this week cause we had the biggest week of our life uh -huh. this last week, like had two videos that went super mm -hmm. viral and like, I've just been you're just like in, in work and you're mode on the grid yeah. and like I got sick. Yeah. I had to like, I took a whole day off and just slept. Cause... It's it's crazy. Cause I feel like I used to have like this, this point in time where like I'd, you know, get overworked and I get sick, but I've somehow like put that line way up here now. So even though I'm working 10 times harder, I'm not yeah. getting sick, which That's is, good. which is a combination of exercise. It's a combination of eating right which is a combination of just staying sleep. all sleep and staying connected with family. Like that's, oh, wow. you know, like it, it sounds little now and you tend to forget about things when you're traveling sometimes. And yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, sometimes I'm still a victim of that. Um, but I miss this lady everywhere I go. And because of so Megan, sweet. it's, it makes it easier on me. Um, and I love the fact that like Megan has a relationship with her. Yeah, I was going to ask, how does Megan with, with your grandma? The, it's, they're amazing. Yeah, yeah. I just smile. Like I just watch them and I think Megan like really appreciates her character and her wisdom and everything that she brings to the table. Um, and she's, she's like one of those people that are just kind of in the shadows all the time. Like no one really knows how much a profound, like of a profound effect she's had on me. And I don't, I think like in a heartbeat, if I'm traveling and something like, you know, she gets sick or she's struggling, like I'm either FaceTiming her or I'm on a plane home. Yeah. It hasn't happened yet, you know, knock on wood, but like she, she is a life. And I think any traveler, anyone who has someone they love at home, like, don't forget that. Like to always have that reminder in the back of your head that like nothing's too big or nothing's too important to like have that connection with someone back home because I, amazing. it'd be, it'd be hard for me to have like get to that point of realization and be like, yeah. Oh man, like I messed up. You have so much balance. I'm so jealous. <laughs> it took a lot of work, man. All right. I've seen a couple of pictures <laughs> on your feed of horses <laughs> laughing. Yeah. It seems like kind of a, like a, a, a signature shot of yours. Yeah. I've seen, I think maybe two or three or four. Um, <laughs> tell me about this one and where it was taken and how do you pull that picture off? Yeah. Iceland. Um, it's my first trip to Iceland with Sam. It was really before like work came in a lot. It was just kind of one of those, like we want to get inspired. Like everyone's like, everyone's starting to go to Iceland. Let's try to get there before others. Yeah. 2016. So back when Iceland was new. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, guys, Iceland's been around for a long time. <laughs> it has, but until like, I think 10 years ago, Chris Picard has talked about it. You couldn't even get a plane ticket really? to Iceland. Like it was almost impossible to find the route there. And, and then get a boat, I guess. Huh? Yeah. I don't even know exactly. Um, wow. but this was, you know, before you started seeing it every day on IG, I guess, yeah. like the people getting there is still kind of <laughs> loving Justin it. Justin Bieber did a video shoot. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, honestly, like I think, uh, we connected with a farmer at a, at his local restaurant and he's like, yeah, if you want to go feed my my horse is some carrots. Go ahead. And I was <laughs> nice. just like, Where, do we even have carrots? And we like had a carrot in the back of our, our van. We were, we were sleeping in and we grabbed it and we fed him. And then next thing you know, these horses are like, like just making these yeah. weird faces. And I'm like, dude, get a camera. Like we got to yeah. shoot that. Like I didn't even plan on shooting it. And that's, that's kind of the outcome of it. A I wide it. angle 16. Like we were, I was probably like legit an inch or two away from his face. Yeah. And they just kept coming back for more. And what you don't see is there's like four other horses next to him all doing the same thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was, it was fun. It was like a good little moment. I love it. Yeah. The white. So for, for any audio listeners right now, just to describe, we have a picture of a horse and his teeth are just kind of coming out of his mouth. It looks like he's laughing. Yeah. That's, but it, that's it's because he's get. eating a carrot. Yeah. It's because he's, he's probably got carrots in his teeth. Um, so <laughs> this kind of answered our question. This is another image from Iceland. It looks like, mm -hmm. um, can you explain this? Was this your first trip in December of 2016? Not for my I mean, first trip to Iceland. That's what you know, yeah, we've been, we've been, I think I was like maybe six to nine months into my photography journey. Um, but yeah, it, honest, I, I love looking back at these because they were so unbiased. Like I didn't have any pictures going into this trip that I have seen on Instagram. Yeah. And, and I think that's something that I've gotten better at now because there's probably like a six month time frame where you're planning for trips. You want to see all these locations. You, you got to get all the names and, and I guess addresses or, you know, pinpoints down of how to get there or where they are. 
and you plan almost a little bit too much, right? Like you, you like, you know, the photo going into it and everyone tries to get that photo with this. There was no photo. There was no, like, we were literally just just like, yeah. Oh, look at that glacier over there. Let's, you know, let's go drive over there type thing. Let's go on a walk. And everyone that was walking by us had spikes on and helmets and they were all actually going to climb onto the glacier. Wow. Um, I forget the, the exact, did I write it? I think I did my, I don't, I couldn't even say it if you asked me. Um, but yeah, we just, we just got to walk around the, the black sand bay of it and there's like, it's, a, it's huge. It's massive, yeah. massive bay. It's inception. Um, or something. yeah. Or interstellar. Yeah. And it's a good, it's a good reminder for me that, you know, it's not, it's not really always about seeing an image and getting to that exact place because I feel like that inspires a lot of us to go do that. Sometimes you just have to go and, you know, live the true spirit of adventure, like just go adventure, go experience, go see what you find. And it's not about a perfect composition. It's not about, you know, what shot everyone else has taken. It's just about standing there and kind of being humbled by what's in front of you. So this image here, I freaking love this picture. (laughs) It's taken in March of 2017. Um, and there is a, it looks like an abandoned airplane, uh, in the middle of a forest. (laughs) So tell me about this. Someone lives in that. Wow. You can actually go get a tour of it if you contact. I, 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 I didn't do it. I think there's a website out there that you can do it on. Um, <laughs> He's trying to make some money. <laughs> I don't know. How, I don't even think he charges. Honestly, I think you just have to find a time or a day that's like works with him. Um, <laughs> oh, man, what's the... I can't even where, remember. But the, where is this located? I didn't see a... It's in Oregon. Okay. Um, I It's a little bit more populated now with with droners and I'm not sure what the current laws are around it. So definitely, you know, do, do some fair research before you get there. Um, at that time, I think it was still relatively unfound. I found it via Google maps. I just kind of like kept zooming around this like city that I knew it was kind of around. And sure enough, I was like, wait, is that a speck in some trees? I think that's it. Zooming all the way in and then boom, there it is. Um, dude, what an amazing like method to find stuff. (laughs) I freaking love that. Yeah, it, and honestly, it's really unique. I think we were there on a rainy day because it rains a lot in Oregon. Yeah. Um, and if there's anything I can tell you about my aerial photography till this day is I don't know how I still have my Mavic. I have flown it in blizzards. I have flown it in <laughs> constant rain. I have flown it in like like off the coast of, of England where it's probably 50 miles per hour and it's, wow. it's moving at like 0.05 like miles per hour back to the coastline and then i have to land it like a mile away and go pick it up because of how much battery life was left like i don't i don't even know how i've gotten my drone back as many times as i have but another image of an animal this is actually a bison that's coming into your car my favorite part is looking at the car itself like look how dirty he got it so there's a bison that literally (laughs) stuck his head into your car yeah tell me about this um our whole car was licked up and down by bisons like there was a horde around us and like like i've never seen so much slobber all around i think my whole arm you can actually see it in the photo yeah was completely drenched in spit um oh my gosh yeah you just you got to be careful with those things like they're they're aggressive like you know like every once in a while you'll you'll get two of them kind of fighting by your car and it's like oh they could probably turn my car upside down right now (laughs) if they really wanted to so what (laughs) what made you think i'm gonna roll my window down in that moment (laughs) i don't know i don't know i just but you're totally fine nothing yeah no no damage no damage nothing at all like even our side mirror that got nudged it got like bent back yeah but but those things move they just come right back yeah um did he lick you or lick anything around you just tongue out like full extension like three inches out um just curious i guess huh yeah it was fun there's like four of us in the car two in the back seat i bet you guys were everyone, just cracking up well everyone had their windows down and there's bisons in every window so oh <laughs> everyone kind of has these photos and um yeah i'm just glad i had a 16 millimeter on because you i didn't you have any been able to get that yeah, yeah yeah it was not far from his face and wow yeah we just kind of drove off after all right so you've been talking <laughs> about her a lot give us give us the the summary of your beautiful I mean, girlfriend. I mean, the caption says it. Follow her. She's pretty. <laughs> um, yeah. Ah, man. Megan's just. So this is Megan. This yeah. This is uh, your Me- girlfriend. I get a lot of people call her Melbourne, but it's just ML born. Um, Megan Lindsay born. Oh, gotcha. That's she, her last name. For now. Yeah. She just. <laughs> say, It'll be, she'll be Mrs. Poops before you know. <laughs> I keep telling her she's got to change her name to Meg Poops when it all happens. <laughs> 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 I don't think I'll ever win on that one, but um <laughs> yeah man she she is inspiring um in my lifetime 
I don't know how I'd still be healthy right now if it wasn't for her. Um, we both kind of have each other's backs when we travel. It's a big world and there's always a lot going on. You know, like you just... What's this picture? Hanging out of a car in Joshua Tree. Wow. Um, we just had a we had a vision going... Like Joshua Tree is only two hours away and yeah. it's kind of my favorite place because I never go there with the intention of like work. I go there with the intention of like peace and quiet and it's one of the most quietest places in the world. Um, so we went there and I was just like, all right, like let's get portraits. You will never find a photo of me hanging out a car. That did never happen. But for her, that, <laughs> that was like my vision, like hang out of the car. Let's get your hair flowing. That's cool. Um, but for Megan, man, like she, she's just, uh, she balances. That's, that's literally the, the best thing she's ever done for me from outside of love and outside of everything that we kind of form as a connection. Um, she just, she looks after me and make, make sure like I'm on top of my life and that I'm not letting work take advantage of me because I put so much time and effort into work where I have 20 projects going on at once and it's way more than I should be handling Mm -hmm. but she'll be there helping me edit she'll be helping me shoot she'll be helping me kind of find the creativity involved waking me up in the morning making sure I'm eating making sure I'm sleeping like you name it she's a true partner and she's a trooper like she it's hard to put up with me. Like I'm go, 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 go. And I don't think anybody guy or girl out there could do it. Yeah. And somehow she's managed to do it. And she's also managed to slow me down, which is something I never thought anyone would do. Um, and when I say, yeah. And when I say slow down, I don't mean it in like in a negative way. I mean it in like a healthy, like balancing ambition with real life, you know? And she makes me spend more time with my family Um, which is something I, like I was mentioning is like, sometimes you get, you get lost in that whole travel and you forget like what's at home. And she just brings all this kind of into perspective for me. Wow. That's Um, gorgeous. Yeah. I love it, dude. Yeah. And we've been traveling for a while. So it's, I hope to meet her soon. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So this image here is unreal. I really, really love this picture. This is a top down shot of a crocodile. Uh huh. Um, the water is beautiful. It looks like it's reflecting the clouds. Um, the composition is just spot on. Do you see Tell, the, Do you see the second one? I see something else <laughs> on the bottom right of the crocodile's foot. Is that another crocodile? That's another crocodile. So where was this taken? Tell me about this picture. I freaking love it. Yeah, Costa Rica. It's kind of like out there, man. Like it's jungle and it's unexpected and it's unexplored and... Um, I only got to spend three days out there and I didn't really have a plan going into it. I booked a last minute flight, um, with a friend of mine that traveled and it was the only, only flight I've ever taken first class. So I was a little bit spoiled going into this raw of a moment. Um, and when we got there, we met up with a friend of, uh, one of my good friends here has a, had a cousin that lived in Costa Rica. So she offered her place for us to stay and drove us around and we were, I forget where we were driving. It was a national park on the coast, uh, like three hours away and about an hour and a half outside of the city. She's like, Whoa, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show you this thing. I totally forgot, but like, let's make a quick stop. And, um, we just pulled off on a bridge now looking, I didn't even know the name of it, but I think it's called like Torcoles or something. I, 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 okay. I try not to put the name out there that much cause I don't want, yeah. you know, people to go find this necessarily. I want them to find it on their own time. Yeah. Um, but we walked onto a bridge with cars speeding by in like a one foot like space on the side of the bridge. So it's kind of like dangerous where you're at. And then you're looking down and there's just this little tiny area, tiny area of shade right under the bridge. And, um, there's probably like 15 to 45 crocodiles just hanging out on the shore and in the water. Oh my gosh. And, uh, yeah, I just, I had my camera. It's not a drone. I think a lot of people think it's a drone, but it it's not. Where is this taken? Because, like, I saw this picture and it really stood out to me because I want to go there. Like, <laughs> this looks like so much fun. Dude, honestly, my favorite part of Tulum, Mexico. It's a little bit outside of Tulum, which is where we were staying. Um, Yucatan Peninsula is, like, I think it's, like, an hour and a half to two and a half hours inland. Um, if you've ever heard of Chichen Itza, it's, like, the famous pyramids in Mexico. Um, it's kind of closer to that in the sense. Um, but dude, so cenotes in Mexico are unlike anything I've ever experienced. I don't even, what's it called? It's a cenote. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. It might 
yeah be pronounced totally different um but from what i understand the i think it's limestone you can kind of see it in the back of the photo um at one point collapses from the ground and falls into a freshwater um pit nonetheless and some of these have two different currents where the top there's like 10 to 15 feet of fresh water and then 10 to 15 feet of ocean current that's flowing underneath like it's just a it's a super magical experience the one thing i could emphasize more than anything on this photo in particular is to also refer to megan's profile because there's photos of her shooting this from the water with an over under um, and the vines aren't the focus. Th these are actually tree roots falling from the top uh -huh. um, with, a, with a swing that you can basically take and then just plummet into the water. Megan was shooting it. You can't see her. She's kind of hidden between the vines on the right. Um, you, I don't even think you would be able to see her if you, even yeah. if you look closely. But she, she was shooting it from an underwater perspective. And you can kind of see it if you look at the blue water closely. Uh -huh. There's white lines. And yeah, those, are, those are light rays directly oh from gosh. the sunlight above. So Megan has these beautiful, like kind of more fine art feel photos where these light rays, light rays are shooting down into the water and then you get someone like diving right in between them. It's incredible. And again, like you, you enter that moment, everyone's shooting it from a different angle and it amazes you the different things you see. Um, but this by far, we probably did 12 cenotes with a group of 10 friends. So like just being out there with all the friends was fun. Um, but lo looking back, that was the funnest we had. I don't even think that's a word, but funnest. Oh, like the best. Yeah, it was. It was just incredible. It's it's more of you in in this moment, like getting to just jump as many times as you want yeah. off a platform. Um, not a lot of people there. I think there was like five other people there that we were also taking photos of and having a good time with. Um, raw, like that's how I explain it. Just raw. So to wrap to wrap this conversation up, like first off. I don't want to wrap it up because I feel like we could talk forever. <laughs> Probably. Um, but there's a lot of people listening who want to be you. They want to be doing what you're doing. <laughs> oh. And you've already taught a lot through this conversation, a lot about maturity, really. Like, mm -hmm. instead of just jumping straight into something with no plan, get a plan in place and, like, work towards it. Save your money. Don't go into a ridiculous amount of debt just to buy a camera because... Well, your iPhone can take pictures, and you mentioned that like iPhone is definitely not the best thing to use in the whole wide world. Mm -hmm. But you can buy like a like a little Sony A six thousand for like under five hundred dollars. That was my first camera, and my first my first like five months of traveling was with that. Yeah, so you, you don't even have to save up a ton of money and buy mm -hmm. an A seven R two with a sixteen or thirty five. That's mm -hmm. something you worked up to. Mm -hmm. So like, what, I know you get this question all the time. But what would you say to that kid that's on Instagram following you right now who wants to be doing what you're doing? Yeah. I feel like everyone will say this, but I hope I can say it in like a unique way, is don't worry about the followers. Don't worry about the numbers. Don't worry about how many likes you get, how much you're averaging a day. Honestly, worry about connecting. Worry, worry about connecting not just with the people that are on this platform, but connecting with your art and your passion and your creativity. Because early on, I can say this without a doubt, that I was more so wrapped up in those things than I should have. I'm not saying like 100% wrapped up, but I was definitely aware of them. I definitely cared about how many people were like seeing this and how many people came in. Um, I look back and I kind of laugh at that a little bit because now it just kind of all happens naturally. And I think that's honestly not because of the time I've put in or the person I am or the things I'm doing. I think it's because I took time on my craft and I got myself to a place where I'm happy with that, that when I post, it's not just to post and to try to garner some value out of it. It's more of just because I'm happy with it. And because I feel for this photo, I feel a moment. I feel the connection with the, the people that I was there with. I'm living in that moment and translating it to present day. You know, and that's that's the thing is a lot of these things have happened over time. I would hope that anyone who's stepping foot into this area really appreciates that because instead of getting lost in a grid or in, in a social circle that, you know, it's, it's ultimately going to take all your time out of your day. You're going to be talking about Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. I mean, what about that sunrise you just witnessed? What about the hike to get out there? What about the people you were with? What about the thing you learned about your camera or or just life in general? Like what? What did you do that actually contributed to your life that day? And I think every kid can probably relate with that. They're, they're thinking about everything. They're thinking about all the things that come into play when you're trying to pursue this. Mm -hmm. I would say, don't worry about it. 
just go get it, go do it, go have fun. Most importantly, go have fun and just try to get better. And your photos will always get better. You know, you're a year ago from the moment you started, you will look back and be like, wow, I've learned so much. Mm -hmm. And if you can't say that, I'd say that you might not be in the right mindset for it. And all it takes is a quick little perspective change. And then all of a sudden you start realizing that like I'm learning things, I'm growing, I'm able to pick brains of the creatives around me. I'm laughing because there's a lot of funny moments on trips that you look back on and it's like, wow, I was, you know, kind of just being dumb that day. Like yeah. just have fun with it. Um, don't get worried about it. Cause I mean, truth be told, Instagram might not be around forever. I mean, that's, mm. it's an, it's an unfortunate fact. And if your art can survive beyond Instagram, you have yourself a feasible life. So you're saying save those raw files on a hard drive <laughs> and not those two megabyte Instagram photos. Right? Yeah, definitely. Um, and there's one thing that I can just assume from meeting you and getting to know you. And I, I think you would want people to hear this too, is like respect nature, respect the locals, like treat them kindly. Like mm -hmm. I'm a ma I would imagine that you have these incredible experiences with people that don't even speak English who yeah. are locals who maybe come from a, a poor background uh -huh. and you're able to really maybe make a change in their life or honestly, it probably changes you more than them. Yeah. And, and I can tell everyone listening that I wasn't always good at that. Like I wasn't always good at like, I, some, there was a moment in time where I was like, I want to go get the photo. Like I want the photo. Like that's what my life and driv like driven purpose was in that moment. And then Megan came along and a little bit of wisdom from other people. And I started realizing that why am I not asking questions? Like why, why would I want to end with a photo where it has no depth to it or no value beyond just a photo? It's just, it's literally just an abstract creative moment, but now I have a story to tell. And I think that's what some people want to get involved with this creative storytelling. And for me that the story isn't so much about like what I did that day. It's also about like who I got to know. Yeah. And that's Megan is so good at that. Like I, I have learned on learned from her so much that when we get into a car with a stranger that might be a tour or, you know, a local or the owner of that piece of land, like that cenote, we make it a point to get to know them. We, we almost don't want to give them a chance to ask us, ask a question because for, and maybe it's a little bit selfish because of that. Maybe if they do ask, we obviously answer, but for the most part, we just want to get to know them. And we want to know like, like, what is, why is this piece of land value to you, valuable to you? Like, did you have time with your family here? Did you have any moments that stick out in your lifetime that really makes this place special? Because then it makes our moment special. Yeah. And it makes like... Now, I bet a lot of shots you get are from asking questions. Oh, yeah. Like, and you never would have thought to go in this one area to get this perfect angle. You can get in a lot of trouble if you see a place that you want to go illegally see and you try to go see it without asking the right questions. And you might end up spending more money. You might end up not being able to see a place. You might end up in a totally different place. But if you do it the right way, you're not only respecting what you're doing, but you're also being the appropriate influencer. You're, you're bringing to life a moment that is meant for the world to see in a certain way. Yeah. And I appreciate that. I, I could tell everyone that if you, if you bring a photo out that is with all grips and, and, and purpose to it, legal and right and you earn that and you you actually did the research for it i appreciate you as a person we decided that at the end of every podcast we would ask the same question we may forget it we may change it over time but for now the question is if you could collaborate with one artist dead or alive who would it be Ooh, that's a good question. Any artist that inspires you, somebody that you followed growing up, could still be alive, could be a filmmaker, photographer, musician even. Honestly, Chris Picard. Really? Yeah. Why, why is that? Um, he's just been doing it for a while. And I know a lot of what I have grown accustomed to, like these questions and these experiences that I'm trying to go get and why they're valuable to me now. He has done it like that for a while. And it's not, it, maybe he learned in the same way. Maybe he, you know, came to, to doing it in a certain way because of his wife or his friends that he's traveling with. I don't know exactly, but I'd love to understand that side to him. And not, I wouldn't like to sit with him from a creative to creative, like, oh, I appreciate your photos and the moments you're able to create because everyone knows that. Everyone knows Chris Picard is creating these timeless pieces of art that really bring 
value to people's lives. It really brings a moment in time to you. But when you, when you sit down with someone, I want to know like his struggles. I want to know how hard it is to be away from family. Like he, he has kids and a wife that you see on his feet all the time. And I know he spends more time away from them than probably most creatives, but like, why, you know, like what, why do you do that? How do you do it? Um, not just that, but like, how do you keep being passionate? Like, how do you continue to thrive in an industry that isn't always easy? It it does have a lot of opinions or questions or time. And he is so good at it. Like the way he balances his time and all that he does, it's like he moves from project to project, just like in an instant. And I have learned from that. I've grown from it. And even just to be able to shoot next to him for a sunrise would, would be pretty cool. I I think it would just be a, a moment I look back on and be like, wow, I hope, I can say we were friends after that moment. Heck yeah, man. Well, we'll call you when he's on the show. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if anybody wants to follow you and follow these images, again, if, mm-hmm. if you didn't hear the beginning, your Instagram handle is... Chris Poops, <laughs> as you'd expect. <laughs> so C-H-R-I-S. P-O-O-P-S. That's it. So everybody go follow Chris Poops. Uh, incredible feed, incredible human being. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet you. So thank you. Thank you, Chris. Humbled, and I appreciate you guys a lot more than you know. The biggest takeaway for me with my interview with Chris was his balance and maturity with everything in his career. It's something that really stood out to me, and I know it probably stood out to you too. If there's anything specific in this interview that you really liked, comment below and we'll have a dialogue about it. This is the first of many episodes. In fact, we're going to be doing one episode every single week here at the Golden Hour Podcast. So make sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified of all of the podcasts that we do on this channel. Once again, I'm Dave Mays. This is the Golden Hour Podcast brought to you by Polar Pro, and I'll see you next week.